Hey, what's up? This is Jay Moss with Reverb.com, and today I'm going to give you three tricks you can use to get awesome sounding modern pop vocals super easily. Let's dig in. Okay, it probably feels like a no-brainer, but the first thing you need is a microphone, and choosing the right microphone for the right vocalist is super important. I would say for 60% or more of the artists that I record, I really like this microphone. It's the SM7B by Shure. It's not overly expensive, you can find them used really easily, but it's an awesome microphone. While it might not have the exact same wow factor as some $10,000 large diaphragm condenser or something like that, it really is a viable option. The SM7B has basically been all over pop records for as long as pop records have existed, this was the microphone for Thriller. If I had to give you any reasons as to where you might not want to use a 7B, I have found that maybe it's not the best choice for singers who have more of like a baritone or a huskier voice if you want to maintain that real top end clarity. I would say for anything tenor, alto, and above, it's great. Baritone is doable, but maybe not the first choice. If you only have room in your budget for one microphone, I would probably recommend grabbing a large diaphragm condenser. Compared to something like the 7B, you're gonna find that most of the time, large diaphragm condensers are gonna give you an airier top end and they're gonna give you a beefier bottom as well. Now you might find that it's ever so slightly harder to fit into the mix because it does have that extended frequency range. So you might find yourself shaving some of the top and you might find yourself shaving some of the bottom, but we can get into all that in a second. A solid large diaphragm condenser is a great choice because it can cover basically Basically every singer. Pop music has a tendency to really have the vocal forward, and even if it isn't the most bombastic, loud, dynamic passage, even if it is a more sincere, laid back vocal, it usually stands above the mix. We need to control our levels to get it there. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is how we can do that really easy with a really common compressor. We're going to use a plug-in version. So many people have it. There's a million different iterations of it, and this trick will work across the entire range. Let's go do that now. All right, here we go. So for this track, we actually did end up using the large diaphragm condenser, the Sound Deluxe U195. The reason we did this, um, it is a female singer, and a lot of times, depending on the female singer and the sharpness of their mid-range, you might find me going with the SM7, you might find me going dynamic, but this was sung in closer to the bottom, or at some times, the very bottom of her register. And this is like, as an engineer, right, you're gonna want to know how to pick those battles. You're gonna to wanna to know like, what's the composition of this song like? And because I listened to it as, as well anyone should before you started working on it, I was like, okay, this isn't a lower register. It would be nice to have that top end. So for that reason, I chose LDC over dynamic. However, if this was in a completely different register, that choice might've been different. Uh, I think either mic could have performed well, uh, but just so you know, going forward, that was my choice. So the second step of getting these vocals to sit how I want them to sit, and in pop music these days is often actually not overly dense. It usually has a big thick sub, like a big kick, it'll have like a snappy snare, but the synths or like the, the average volume things that we typically lean on in rock music, you know, guitars, cymbals, all of that stuff, it's usually pretty subdued or maybe not even there at all. And in this track in particular, there's no guitars, there's some tight hats, there's never like a big washy cymbal. So in turn, what that ends up leaving us with is a ton of space for the vocal. For that reason, we can go kind of aggressive with the compression because it's going to fill most of the composition. So I wanna control it so that I have better control over the fact that it's gonna be such a dominant force in the mix. I'm gonna show you what I did for this. And for pop compositions, this is probably representative of like 80% of the vocals I would track when it comes to dynamics. So let's look at the much known, much beloved 1176 compressor in plug-in form. Uh, any 1176 compressor can do all this stuff and I'll show you the settings I'll use and I'll show you why I used them. Okay, so here we go. Those are my vocals. I've got a center track, a left track, a left track, and then I have a harmony center left and left as well and what you're going to see is there's moments where they are sort of dynamically even but they're kind of quiet and then they dip down and then boom we get this big blast right here and then they kind of go back down to like a, a more consistent volume the reason i really like these settings is for moments like this it's just totally going to grab and hold so on an 1176 if you pull your attack knob all the way to seven that's going to attack as fast as possible and if you pull your release all the way to one, it's gonna release as slow as possible. So what does that end up doing? It's gonna give you maximum hold on your vocal. I'm gonna show you that right now. As I play these vocals, watch when we hit this word right here and watch how much more the needle controls it, but how consistent 
the vocal volume remains. Oh, okay, would it bother you if I have to stay one? Cool, and real quick, I'll show you the whole passage just so you can kind of hear it again. Will you make it home okay? Would it bother you if I have to stay one? Pretty cool. So that's pretty cool, right? We've got like a reasonable amount of compression going for these lower dynamic moments, but when we needed to kick in and when we needed to hold that consistency and make the vocals not just totally pop out of the mix and ruin our entire dynamics, it's there to do so. 1176 is one of the fastest compressors ever, uh, so I completely recommend it, especially for pop vocals and for this type of trick, it's totally a go-to. Okay, and before we move on any further, I want you to take a quick look at sort of these two colors here. The purple vocals are the vocals that I would categorize as longer vocals that I would want a completely different effect set on. And down here we have more staccato and faster vocals. Uh, and these are going to require a completely different effect set. So what I want to show you now is how I treat those two things differently. So for the passages where she sings longer notes, less syllables, we're going to use effects that are longer in nature, that fill up more space, that just throw more things into the air. It makes excitement. It creates depth. It's great. And then when things tighten up for the verses and she's singing more staccato and there's more syllables to encounter and compositionally it just kind of makes more sense to go a different road. I think the tricks that I'm about to show you will make a ton of sense and they're also really, really easy to do. And it'll get your vocals sounding from kind of like dry and boring to something really cool, really Really, really fast. Okay, so real quick, let's just hear this verse passage real quick. Let's listen to how the vocals sound, and then we'll start soloing stuff, and I'll show you what I used. Don't know how to make this okay. Would it bother you if I could? That sounds really cool and it sounds really wide. It sounds kind of modulated, kind of unique. It sounds really modern. It reminds me sort of like what Billie Eilish is doing right now. I think it's a very contemporary take on a modern pop vocal. There's really two things that create that effect. You've got sort of your normal stuff. We've got a center vocal here. We've got a left and right double. They're thinned out. They're panned all the way left, all the way right, and they're tucked. And then you've got your harmony center here. And you've got the same thing, left, right, they're thinned out and they're panned. So what really makes this cool is this little plugin called MicroShift from Sound Toys. And I couldn't recommend this more. The MicroShift plugin is really cool and it really just does what the name sounds like. It's gonna take your vocal and it's going to micro shift the pitch just a little bit. Not enough so it sounds like out of key or anything like that. The ear will compensate for those differences. But what those differences create is a sense of depth and a sense of modulation and a sense of width. And when used with the right genre in the right song, this is a really cool, interesting way to get creative with your vocals that isn't just like more reverb or, or something like that. This is kind of revisiting things that we used to do decades ago, but doing it in a fresh new way that feels great and contemporary. So here I'm gonna showcase the high harmony. I'm gonna start with the plug-in bypass and I'm gonna play a passage. It sounds cool, it sounds wide, but just get ready. Wait till I turn the plug-in on and I play the same passage and listen to how much more interesting it sounds. Don't know how to make this okay, would it bother you? Cool, now let's turn on micro shift. Don't know how to make this okay, would it bother you? How awesome is that? Like we created an interesting vibe, we created width, but we didn't have to use like spatial width in the sense of like, it's a bigger room, it's got delay, anything like that. Well, all we really did was just modulate the pitch on the edges and it created something new, something different, something exciting. Uh, so I really recommend you try that out. So before I move on, I'm just gonna play both the melody and the harmony at the same time. Same thing as last time, I'm gonna play it without micro shift, then we're gonna replay it with. I really want you to understand what this does. Don't know how to make this okay, would it bother you? Alright, now let's turn on micro shift. Don't know how to make this okay, would it bother you? So sick. I love that. Okay, so now let's dig into the more atmospheric passages of this song. They've got longer note values, uh, everything's more drawn out, and we want to really embellish that. The pitch shift thing was cool for the staccato parts when we wanted to dry it up, but this, we're going to go to some more traditional avenues. So I'm going to show you two things that I lean on like all the time that I really, really like. All right, so let's quickly listen to the vocals with no effects whatsoever. We go on Great, and let's unmute 
Valhalla. And I've cranked it just so you guys can kind of hear what it sounds like. We go on and on. We go on and on. So what I really like about Valhalla is it does some pitch modulation as well, which as we just learned is a widener, but man, it goes forever and it adds this cool top and shimmery stuff. What I usually use it for is kind of like a pad. I'll put it like right below, like what's really discernible in the mix. Like you don't necessarily hear it, but you would notice if I took it away. That's kind of like my go-to way to use it, unless it's a special circumstance or something. But because it's so long, it can help increase the density of your vocals just by tucking it under there and adding that pad where one thing extends to the other. Okay, so now let's look at this Starlight preset with Echo Boy. I really love this. This is also gonna create a foundation and sort of extend our vocal, but it does it with delay. And that's a little bit different. There's a lot of repeats here. So this one I can't crank quite as much because as you see, I'll move the fader up and it gets overwhelming really quickly. But you at least get to hear what it does. Let me put it in a more appropriate position now. All right, now let's hear that together with Shimmer. We go on and on. And just for context, let's take both off one more time and play it without, but this time we'll do it with a whole mix. Not terrible, but Let's put our effects back in. So what were our three tips, right? Number one, try to pair the right microphone with the right voice. If you can't, be prepared to do a little bit of EQ. Number two, try out these 1176 settings. Almost everybody has at least an 1176 plugin give it a go. They seem aggressive, but in context, they really hold your vocal up at the top of the mix. And in pop music, that is paramount. And last but not least, once you've captured your vocals, you've controlled your vocals, then you can have fun with them. And do that based on the composition and based on the vibe of the song. I recommend for these wordier passages or more staccato passages, why don't you try out some of this pitch shift stuff? Why don't you try out something a little different? Lean less on the reverbs, lean less on the delays, keep it modern, keep it contemporary, and give it a go. But if the song does have some longer passages, like this song does, then feel free, let the delays rip, let the reverbs rip, and do some stuff with modulation as well. Really tailor it to the song. And as mixing engineers, that's the number one thing we can do. Capture, control, and embellish. Those are the tips, take them home. I'm Jay Moss with Reverb.com. I hope you had a blast, I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. Until then. Stay one.